Hey Jim Marty, signing in. Welcome to part 20 of the C++ and SFML 2 platform tutorial series. And today we're going to work on the collide function some more. Get that working a little bit more. We worked a little bit on it last tutorial, but we didn't finish it up. So we're going to work some more on that. You know, something that interesting happened to me the other day. I was going, I was going outside to do my mutual worries because, well, I mean, I'm a, I live on an acreage, so so I went outside and little did I realize, but it was minus 50 degrees Celsius with the wind chill. Yeah, for Americans, that's about minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So, if you're British, I don't know what system you use, so you're gonna have to figure that one on your own. So anyway, so I went outside there, and I didn't put on a scarf or anything, because I didn't think it was that cold out. I knew it was a little cold, but I didn't think it was quite that cold. My lips were frostbit. I didn't really notice anything initially, but then I, in the next couple days, then they started chopping really bad. Minus 50 degrees Celsius weather is not a good time to go licking monkey bars. One kid at school did that once. I don't know if it was that cold, but... So, when it's minus 50 degrees Celsius, you gotta wear a toque when you go outside. If you're British, that would be, you gotta wear a, a wool cap. So anyway, we have a lot to do with coding, so I'm just gonna cut into the last video that I did. Sometimes I record two videos in a row just because I just get it on a roll and then it's just easier to do it that way. And I'm glad I did, because then I don't have to talk through this entire video with these horribly chapped lips. So anyway, I'm just gonna cut into that and let's start coding. Our guy is not quite collision detecting correctly with the right side, with the left hand side of it. Right now we're detecting if our left hand side hits the left hand side of it, which we don't want to do. We want to detect if the right hand side of our collision detection square hits the left hand side of the block. What we can actually do here is we can, we're going to create just like the exact same thing we did for the platform class, we're going to do likewise for the player class. So we're going to go inside here, we're going to create some floats, we don't want those to be ints because these are going to be exact. This just reminds me, when we, we don't want these to be ints integers. These need to be precise because this is the precise location of our platform. Which if our platform actually moves, it's going to become very important later on for this to be a float, not an integer. So very important. Fix that before a problem ever happens with that. And we can like literally just copy and paste it, which is not actually a bad idea. Copy that, copy those four lines, top side, bot left side, bottom side, paste that into constructor right here so we don't have to retype all that stuff and then scroll up again. So, and then what we can also do is select this much of the code here where the left side, right side, top side, bottom side, they're all given values. Copy all that. Scroll down into player class and inside player class update and right inside here before we collide, it's important to do this before we collide, we're going to give these values, give these variables a value. You always get the two backwards. And everything here is the same except we do not have a scale. Like there's no scale inside this player class. So we're gonna have to create that, which is a good idea because in case we want to zoom in and out, have a nice zoom function into our player. So we're going to go int, with this can be an int, it doesn't have to be as very precise if we don't want it to be. And int scale, and we're going to set that equal to, well, we're not going to set it to equal to anything. Inside the constructor, it's a good habit to go set that equal to something in there. Scale and equals one, which is just one pixel per pixel. We're not going to up it by anything for now, just leave it as is. So now what we can do, instead of get position dot x, we're going to want to deal with the left side. So we can just go left side, and there we go. So it saves a whole whack of lines of code. Okay, so what the problem actually is, is not, it's not on our logic, it's what we're doing with the logic. So when we go here, we're saying, right here, we're saying image dot set position on the left side of the platform. But, so that means, just pull up in a second, it really makes it easier to explain. So here's a player, so that is the the most terrible square I've ever seen. But oh well. So when our player is hitting here, it's setting his position bloop, to over here because this the top left hand corner is the X position on it. So we instead what we want to do is we're gonna want to add onto it or subtract to forget. We're gonna want to subtract from it its width. So that's gonna go plunk and then it can't get past that square. So don't save that actually I'm just gonna leave it open. I feel like we might need paint a bit more later on in this tutorial. So we're gonna go eat platform dot left side and we're gonna subtract from that our width yeah we don't want to subtract our width so we're gonna go image dot get local bounds again is just to find how big it is dot width and then multiply that times three so multiplied by three or not three scale why did I say three we're gonna want to go with scale whatever our scale might be so we can change the scale easier enough later on in the code just like minor preferences and stuff like that so now if we try that, it should go a little bit better. And that's even more glitchy. Wait, okay, hold on a second. So let's see, we got image.set position, and then a huge, incredible huge line. So vector to have, uh-huh. 
And now we've messed up our logic again. So now our logic's messed up. No, we're not going to want to collide with our left side of ourselves. We're going to collide with the right side. So finally, now that the debacle is out of the way, it should be going good. And yes, it is running perfectly. So now we're running to the right. We can't go past it. We've been still moved to the left without any serious air issues. So all good. But of course, we can see that the platform is not that big. It's only, it only stops about there. So we're going to have to create a few more if statements a few more a bit more logic to this it's not going to be quite this simple so we're going to go and open up the and operator which is two and signs or you can use and i'm fairly sure i don't know if it works but just go with that and in order for a collision to go through that we are actually are just going to collide we're going to do our left side cannot be less than so we cannot be our left side cannot be intruding on the right side of the platform so then we're going to go plot forms and then dot right side right side so now in order collision detection this is what the logic looks like now i'll just make sure you guys can get all that a quick second so now what's going to have to have to happen is your guy can go inside here but it will stop working if he gets it way over here so once he exits inside there then it's going to stop so now we just have to do the same thing for x and y for just y so then we're going to hit enter so that it spaces out so it's not an insanely long line we're gonna go top side or actually we're gonna go with bottom side because the bottom shall collide with the top of our platform so bottom side and then in order for this to work that should not be greater than the platforms top side platforms dot top side and our top side cannot be less than the platforms bottom side so platforms and then dot bottom side so that actually should work that's actually fairly good logic but no our compiler said that was not good logic at all and and then we missed out on the and here so you gotta go and there save that hopefully no syntax errors now and now okay so we're not colliding with it and nothing is happening so perfect but then we do collide with it and what happens is we get thrown to the right hand side of it which is just a test just to see that the collision detection is working so the collision detection is working so now we can safely create we can safely create a value that is true if we are if all these arguments down here are true are met then we can safely create ourselves an argument that will be true if that happens up here we're going to create a boolean with just bol we're going to call this collision or actually is collide so this will tell us if we are actually colliding with something and down here in our constructor if we can set is collide equal to false because initially we shouldn't be colliding with it. and then we want to scroll down and what happens if all this is true well for now we're not going to want to do anything besides setting our collision or is collide rather to true so then right here in this if logic if all these conditions are met finally we are going to be colliding with something we don't know what we're colliding with we're not going to sure what we're going to do with that info but we know that we are, are colliding with in fact something but now our collision detection is going to be set to always true because we've never said what happens when all this is not met so right here at the end this parameter right here or this curly brace that open that is opened here close there well, we're going to create an else statement which says if everything i said here is not true go ahead and do whatever it is i'm about to tell you and then open up some more curly braces which that thing was in the way but i just opened some curly braces and inside here if none of that is true then is collide is collide equals false so if we're not colliding colliding is equals false so now we're going to create an if statement with if open up some parameters and open up some curly braces so now the best way to determine how we are colliding is based on our x and y velocity so if we're moving to the right if our x velocity is positive that means that we're moving to the right and like in oh no i closed out of my demonstration so like like we can see here if we're moving to the right that means that we, when we hit here we're going to be hitting the right side of it so based on that we can use that to determine which side of the block we're hitting so that's probably the best way of doing it for now as far as i can see if you guys think of a better way i'd love to hear your creative solution so we're, we're, but before we do that we're going to want to give collide a few additional parameters which is just going to be a float which we're going to call this x val delta which is just a, a simple testing version of our x velocity and we're going to do the same thing for y velocity float y val delta why i went with delta is because Delta commonly in mathematics just means a change, a changed value or something. So plus, it sounds like we know something that we probably don't know what we're talking about here. So now we've said that's expecting this argument. So now I have to actually give it the argument, which in our case 
is if we're dealing with the x velocity first, so x fell del, we're just gonna give it x fell and then zero. You might be thinking, whoa, I mean, why are we going with zero here? Shouldn't this should this not be y velocity? Theoretically, should be, except that in order for our system to work, again, pull up paint. Why did I, I keep closing it every time? If we are colliding, so if we're inside this detectable square here, and our velocity, our x velocity is positive, that means we're moving to the right. So based on that, we can safely say pretty much that we're going to be hitting this side of it. But what if we're really on top of it and we're moving to the left or right? Then what? So thus, we cannot deal with the y velocity and the x velocity at the same time. We can only deal with one. So based on only one, that will tell us if we are colliding with the left or right. So based on that, we're going to have to actually call, call our collide function twice. So collide and, and almost parameters and the little semicolon. And inside here, instead of x velocity, go with zero. So that it's saying that initially for this for this collide, like the second collide we're running, we're not going to be dealing with the x velocity. We're going to be dealing with the y velocity, and then and comma platforms. We, we could have created a, a different collide function. We could have created one so called collide x and another one called collide y, which would have worked too. But this way is actually it does essentially the same thing with a ton less lines of code. If our x val delta so delta is greater than one greater than zero actually, based on that we can give our image a new coordinate. So image dot set position set pause position. Inside those parameters we're gonna go vector because this is a vector as two points, the y position and the x position. Just like a math class, vector, same thing. And so for x we're gonna wanna put we're gonna set it to the platform's left side plus plus our width. So or actually minus our width. Subtract our width. So then it's gonna be image image dot get local bounds again local bounds and then dot width and then we're going to multiply that multiplied times the scale which we do not is not required to open up some more parameters here because it's going to make the multiplication first which is what we want to do because it does multiplication first same way in math class so there we go and then we also have to give it another value which is going to be the y, y value which we're not going to want to change it, so we can just go image dot get position to leave it essentially unchanged. I can, that error will not leave me alone. I'm just going to have to get used to it. I'm just going to have to. It's a way of life now. I'm going to have to accept I missed up to an eye every time. So this is where we're going to end the video for today. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this, this video. With the videos, I mean, I can't go too terribly long. I could go, like half an hour. I can do that every now and then because when it's that long, then it just takes a, a while to actually upload. And our country internet is pretty shaky. So like sometimes it's just like either you won't be able to connect or you will be able to connect. So in the next video, we're going to completely finish up the collision detection function with the platform. So stay tuned for that video. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Each Mario.